Hi everyone, welcome back to this series of key concepts from the project management body of knowledge. This one is really fantastic because it looks into forecasting and maybe figuring out whether we want to spend money on this particular project or on another particular project. It really gets into, into the meat of it before you kick off or initiate your project and that's what makes it really, really great to learn about and to know about these forecasting techniques for your project returns. There are many different ways to forecast these, these things in your project. And so as you initiate your project, you may need to show your stakeholders the potential benefit that, uh, that might happen, that might come out of your project, or, or what you're going to deliver. Are you delivering, say, a million dollars? Um, or, is it, uh, your, or is it something else? Is it something else in benefit? Maybe it's customer value or customer goodwill. There's some soft benefits there. Or is it some amount of value over time? So potentially every, every month or every year, for example. So to do this, there are three common methods of forecasting that you will see on the PMP exam and in your project management career as well. You've got future value, where we're looking at what the value of a dollar today is in the future. Uh, net present value, where we're looking at you know, what, uh, what the total outcome of our project three years into the future uh, is what that's actually worth today. So that's really important to look at as well. And our internal rate of return. So if we're delivering a you know, million dollars over three years or whatever it is we're delivering, uh, you know, what's the actual percentage ret return in today's uh, figures as well? So that's uh, shown as a percentage for that one. And for all of these on your PMP exam, really you just need to know to choose the highest for each of them. So net present value, if you've got a choice between you know, uh, $100,000 and $120,000, you choose the $120,000 one. That's the one that you're gonna go with, the higher one. Uh, same with future value. Choose the highest future value uh, and choose the highest percentage for your internal rate of return. But we're also gonna show you how to calculate these just so that you do know them uh, and it's a little bit of fun as well. So future value, really quickly. This is what our money would be based on a certain rate of return. For example, like an interest rate if we're earning 5% a year or 10% a year. So in this example, our future value equals our current value, present value, uh, multiplied by one plus our interest rate. So one plus 10%, for example, which is 0 0.10. So it ends up as 1.1. 1 .1. Uh, and uh, to the power of, that's what this is, to the power of the time. So in this case, we've got uh, three years. So let's look at this example. The value of $1,000 in three years time at 10% interest. So we've got our $1,000 times 1.1, so 10% is our interest, one plus 0.1, so 1.1, uh, to the power of three. So that means 1.1 times 1.1 times 1.1. That's three times we multiply those by each other. And that ends up to be 1.331, sorry, <laughs> when you multiply all of those together. So we end up with 1,000 times 1.331, and that gives us our future value of 1,331. So that's how we figure out the future value at a certain rate of return. Let's say our project is going to give us a return of 10% per year. That's very promising. Uh, and that's our potential return. Now, we can do this the other way as well. So we could say, if we've got $1,331 in the future, then, uh, and we wanna figure out what that's worth today, then we actually just use divide instead of multiplication. So we just, uh, we go 1331 divided by uh, 1.331, or our 1.1 times 1.1 times 1.1. Uh, and that will give us $1,000 in today's value. So that's how we do that looking backwards. And that's important because that's what we're going to use for our net present value. Now you might see this come up. This comes up in financial you know, uh, statistics and that sort of thing. Uh, really, really cool technique to figure out what the project returns would be worth today versus a certain rate of return and the future cash flows that we're going to get out of our project, the future returns. So net present value equals uh, the cash flow of year one divided by one plus 
our uh, internal rate of return, which is our interest rate. And again, you know, so this is sort of foreshadowing for our next one, which is internal rate of return. But uh, let's say it is in this case, 10% uh, again. So it's 0.1. So we've got 1.1 again. That's our 10% rate of return. So our cash flow, let's look at the example. We've got cash flow in year one or month one or whatever the, the actual time frame is. It's, it's your choice. Uh, so we've got $500 and we're dividing that. Now we're looking backwards, just like we were in the other one, remember? So we're looking backwards uh, and we're dividing it instead of multiplying it. So we divide it by 1.1 and that gives us 454. Great, very easy. Now we've got our second year or our second month or our second day, $500 a day. That's what we should be aiming for, right? <laughs> That's a nice, nice return for us. Uh, now we divide that by 1.1 uh, to the power of two. So it's 1.1 times 1.1 which equals 1.21. So 500 divided by 1.21 gives us 413. And so on and so on, to the power of three, to the power of four, to the power of five. You could do as many of these as you see fit. You add them all together, and then you minus the initial investment. So we invested $1,000 into this project, wonderful. And our cash flow each, uh, each time period, we add these together. And so overall, we've added those all together. We've taken away the initial investment because that's a cost to us. It's not a benefit that we're getting. And all in all, we get $243. Now, of course, you know, in the real world, this might be $243,000, $243 million, whatever size project you're working with. Or if it's a personal project, maybe it is $243 and that's wonderful. Uh, but any positive return, that's what we're looking for. And the higher, the better, as we said. Which brings us to the internal rate of return. And the internal rate of return, it naturally flows here because we're using the net present value again. Uh, except what we're doing now is we're we're trying to figure out what that internal rate of return is. So the, uh, that, that interest rate, we're trying to figure that out usually through trial and error. So basically we have to, to figure out what that rate of return is uh, and we, we sort of go up a little bit, down a little bit until we get to the stage where it's the percentage that makes our net present value equal zero or as close to zero as we possibly can. And so, and again, the higher the internal rate of return, the better. Now let's go through an example just so it's not too confusing. But the initial outlay for our project is $1,000. That's our initial cash flow, and we send that out to, to create our project. That's our cost. So minus $1,000. And then what we're doing is we're adding all of the benefits to that over time. So in this case, we've got $400 uh, cash flow, $400 cash flow, $400 cash flow coming in uh, each time period. And let's just call it every year. So let's say we've got three years. Uh, and each of those years, we've got $400 coming in. Now remember, we're doing that dividing instead of multiplying because we're, we're trying to figure out the current value of these future cash flows. So we're using that dividing instead of multiplication. And let's go through it. So we've got uh, 400 divided by 1.1. Let's say 10%. We're going to have a guess and say 10% is our, is our interest rate. Uh, and that gives us 363. Now 1.1 to the power of two, so 1.1 times 1.1 equals 1.21. So 400 divided by 1.21 is 330, and so on and so on. And again, we could do this for as many time periods as we want. Uh, and then the next one to the power of three for our third year uh, gives us 300. So minus 1,000, and we're adding 363 adding 330 and adding 300 and that gives us to 993 which is just shy of a thousand so that's that's really close now we could fiddle around with this a little bit if we wanted to we could say maybe it's going to be a higher percentage maybe it's 1.11 uh, maybe it's 1.12 or maybe we go the other way and we try and figure out and uh, you know wh which way do we need to go to get the closest percentage to get it as close to zero or just above uh, as possible. And that is our internal rate of return. Remembering that when you get the question on the exam, you might have uh, three projects, one with an internal rate of return of 10%, one with 12%, one with 15%, 
and for our purposes we want to choose the highest internal rate of return and the other ones uh, maybe we'll look at at, an, at a later stage or put into a different program of work or however you want to do it for that particular scenario. And these are all of the forecasting project return techniques that you will see on your exam and in your project management career.